Hi Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Aussie and that's the front page of the pattern so you know what it looks like. Now um, initially I made this for Halloween so you can take it for trick-or-treating, make it for the children or the grandchildren or just make it for yourself and obviously you can see this is like Halloween fabric, it's great isn't it? Um, it's got a lovely sort of bottom that has some kind of gathers so it's got a circle but it sits quite flat um, and it will sit really nicely wherever you stop to get sweeties. Um, on the other hand we could make it um, to put a plant pot in for instance so it could be something that you have with some glorious fabric on the side of your of your room maybe and have a big plot pot plant in there so I'm going to make one with that in mind I have got the smallest plant in the world that I'm going to put in there but we'll see what it looks like so really although I've made it for trick-or-treating I think it would be perfect for any time of year and it, you could make it smaller for a, maybe a flower um, girl at a wedding that sort of thing so this is Aussie um, and she's one of the October patterns for the gold sewing group um, and I hope Hope you enjoy making her so let's get started I'll just pop her over there so you've got some pattern pieces with this so you'll have to print out those pattern pieces I don't, I'm not sure I've got them to hand but it's just two it's the side um, you've got four sides of this shape and there's a, a top that's the top is narrower than the bottom and if you get a little bit confused with with this that this is the top this is the bottom it does say on the pattern but I would perhaps mark it uh, maybe pop, pop a notch in whichever one that you, you know, maybe you're going to notch all the top ones, for instance, just so you know you're getting them the right way around. Because there's not a lot of difference, but enough to um, make a difference to the actual finished size of the bag. So that's one size. And then you've got the base um, and you've got that circle, which is uh, obviously the perfect circle. So it's just that piece you need to worry about. So you need um, four of those in the outer, four of those in the lining, one of those in the outer and one of those in the lining. We've uh, put, uh, or I've put wadding on the back of each of the sides. So each of those, the wadding goes right up to the edge. I was okay about doing that. And then the base, I've got some Decaville light just to give it a little bit of rigidity on the bottom. So it's got a nice flat bottom. And then I've put some wadding uh, on top of that so the inside of the bag is nice and soft and squidgy it's, you've got to protect the sweets <laughs> so those are the layers that I've used um, you've also need to cut some straps uh, all the measurements are in the pattern of course and you're just going to fold the long edges to the middle as we normally do and fold again um, it's a three inch wide strap so you end up with a three quarters of an inch wide strap when you've finished um, and you're going to stabilize this with a medium weight stabilizer. Now you don't have to do that. Um, I would I would do the stabilizer because it gives it, if I bring this one in, it gives it a little bit more rigidity and it allow, does allow the um, handles to actually stand up on their own. Whereas if they weren't stabilized, they would just flop. It's up to you. Um, but it, it gives them quite a nice finish. So those are they and you need two of those finished um, where you've stitched down both sides. So even though you're folding this in half, you're stitching the double folded edge and the single folded edge to make a really nice, neat finish. And use a contrasting thread. I mean, certainly with the Halloween one, I use black thread throughout, which doesn't take any prisoners. Um, and you can see every uh, stitch that I've made, but I that was deliberate. Um, I could have used orange on the stitching, um, but I used, I used black throughout. So, and also these get stitched twice. Um, I do recommend you do that uh, there's a reason for that I'll tell you we'll talk about that as we go through um, but yes like I say I could have used orange but I've just it's Halloween and of course I've got a lovely black lining look at that isn't that gorgeous you can't see anything except the sweeties so I've prepared my straps so they're good to go um, and now we're going to start with the four outer pieces so of course the lining I've got um, I'm using koala um, fabric so something a little different uh, and because I'm putting a plant in I've used that sort of pattern fabric um, so it's kind of like plant-based 
Um, so there's my base, and then I've got four pieces of the outer. Oh, here was, I knew I had the pattern pieces somewhere. Those are the pattern pieces that you'll have. Okay, let's pop those to one side. So the first thing we need to do, and this is a really easy make, is to stitch all the sides together except the last seam. So match up your pieces right sides together. If we go on the overhead just for a moment so you can see, so I want, I want to kind of follow the pattern as you would see it. Now obviously with my fabric it's directional which is handy because all my koalas are facing the right way. So I know that's my top seam and that's what I said to you about if you Maybe if it's not directional fabric you're using, you could put a notch in there so you know that's the top. So we're going to do right sides together with our two pieces. It's a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're just going to go down one. We're going to join on the third one, join on the fourth, but we're not going to join all four together. So like I said, a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, because we're going through two lots of wadding, two lots of fabric, just increase your stitch length to maybe three, so it easily goes through all of those layers. Back stitch at the bottom. Okay, so there's our first two pieces stitched together. So, um, and then just start adding the next piece. So each time you do, uh, you finish the side, you sew another side on, except that last seam. So. And like uh, a lot of patterns, there's a lot of repetition. Um, so once you've done one little bit, you know, you'll, you'll have this sort of conquered, really. So there's my three pieces. So if I do it this way, you can see my three pieces. So now I'm going to stitch the fourth piece. <laughs> I nearly said the third piece. Uh, again, locking stitch at the top, back stitch. And I'm not actually measuring my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not, I'm using my quarter inch foot. But um, because there's a lot of thickness here, it doesn't matter hugely if I go just a bit beyond. So there's my four pieces stitched together. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is attach the strap. So I'll go on the overhead for this so you can see quite clearly how we do that. I'll just get my little pins. Let's see if I can find my mice, my mouse with my pins. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to at least do one full strap. Okay, you'll, you'll understand what I mean shortly. And the strap goes directly over the seam. Now the seam is slightly bulbous, as you can see, it's got shape to it. Um, I do suggest that you open up the seam at the back and if you can put an iron over it and just flatten it all out or finger press it or get your um, fabric roller out you know um, just to distribute that fabric a little bit um, like I say you can do that finger pressing I would just you know run run your finger along there and just put the heat of your your thumb or your finger just to open it up okay and you can do that all the way along I'll do one and then we'll just carry on. Okay, you see that? I would press that if you can. If you've got a, um, a, a, t a dressmaking ham, a tailor's ham, you can pop that over the top and it's easier to actually um, press because you can see it's quite sort of rounded. Anyway, from this side, we're going to put the raw edges of the strap to the center of that seam. Okay, and then we'll pop a pin in like that so we know we've got that bottom edge done and you can see by my koalas that that's the bottom got a little bit of wadding there which i might just trim off there we go and then you're just going to track it literally up that seam so like i said because it's um rounded i would put a pin in at least every inch and a half take it right up to the top There we go. And what we need to do is measure. I'm going to pop a pin in there so it holds it straight. But then we're going to measure an inch down from the top. 
and we're going to just stitch up to that inch line so let's get a tape measure I haven't got my ruler handy so measure an inch down I'm just using a pencil but you use a heat erasable pen I can see that perfectly fine and I'm going to stitch over it anyway so there's my inch line there you perhaps might not be able to see it I wonder if I can grab my pen and see if we can make that brighter for you there we go I think that's a lot better for you to see and so we're going to stitch from the bottom all the way up across there and you can do a couple of lines there of stitching just to make it really secure and then you're coming down the other side now this is where I spoke to you earlier about um, that you're going to be double stitching it's not wouldn't be very easy if you didn't stitch that and started stitching here you'd end up with sort of um, either loose threads or you'd see your reverse stitching if you wanted to just stitch this bit and then stitch that bit so that's why I'm saying it's neater even though you might not think so to actually stitch over the top now if you're at all worried about stitching over the top because obviously it's got to be super neat you're either going to stitch on the same line and do a double row and try your best to stitch on that same line or you're going to come in a little bit and you're going to do what I call like a train track so you'll have a double line going up there and because of the way we folded the fabric it's not going it's, it's perfectly fine none of your seams are going to be showing it's going to be still as strong so you could do that double line uh, and follow all the way up across here and then back down okay so it was important for me to sort of tell you that so I'm just make sure your strap is nice and straight sort of track it round and you're going to attach it to the next one so the first strap you do is easy because it's just next door to each other okay and it doesn't matter if you start from the left or the right it, the, the, the same rule, rule applies so let's just pop our strap right in the centre of our seam line there. And again, just as we did before, open up that seam at the back and just um, pop your strap over the top. It's literally tracking that line up. It's not quite. There we go. Tr tracking that line up all the way up. And like I say, you'll find it easier if you open that seam up. Uh, I would just be mindful if you've used some um, polyester wadding just be mindful that you don't scorch it or melt it just be careful of that so just open that all up I'm going to pin at the top so it's secure and straight and then we'll do another pin sort of about there and you can feel that the seam is under there and again we're just going to mark down an inch so let's uh, let's do that so you just mark across love a heat erasable pen for this sort of thing so that's that's what it's going to look like on the first instance okay now what we can do is to put this third one on but we can't do the fourth one yet because we haven't joined the seams up if you think about it we've got we've got two raw edges here that haven't been joined yet so we can't put that fourth strap on but we can do this half at the, at the very least so let's do that again like I said open up that seam and track it up and you'll, you'll spend a little bit of time getting that absolutely sitting perfectly let's just open up that seam and to be honest when you do press this and open up the seam on the back it's going to help you so much when you put this strap on it really will so before I run out of pins and this is this is the sort of moment in time where you you have to use pins really as much as I dislike them <laughs> okay lovely so that's all lovely and secure along there you can just about see so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do another one inch from the top 
Okay, you can use your any of your rulers. I just happen to have this tape measure on my desk. And let's get let's get the right markings here. Here we go. One inch. There we go. So we've got our mark for that. Good. But obviously you're not going to stitch this side. So that, that is still loose. Okay, so we'll stitch this one, this one and this one. And then I'll show you the next stage. So let's get the machine ready. And like I say, you're going to follow your stitching up or you're going to make that tram line. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. If, if, if this worries you about following the, the, the original stitching, then don't do it. Um, and also you could use a decorative stitch. So just take your pins out as you go. Um, I think some of you will be fine about um, stitching over your original stitching and others I think may choose the, the alternative option. And I'm sure lots of you will come up with your own way, which is great. I love that. Because, you know, I can't, I, sometimes I really can't think of everything. So I'm going back and going across and then I'm coming down. Just make sure your shape is maintained. You don't want to put any pleats underneath your strap. Love this fabric. And again, as usual, it's from Higgs and Higgs. And uh, I don't know if they ship to the US, but um, they ha they ha this is a French cotton and it's a lot, lot wider than traditional um, quilting cotton. So um, I love it for that reason, because it's obviously um, very cost effective, but also it's just, it's, they have lovely fun fabrics. Um, probably some that I wouldn't normally choose and I don't I don't think that's a bad thing I got stuck somewhere yeah I don't think that's a bad thing to have uh, to use fabrics you wouldn't normally use <laughs> I think it sort of takes us out of our comfort zone every now and again I think that's fine so I'm going across back and across I'm just assuming if this was a trick-or-treat bag for somebody um, that's why you're making it that you're going to have a lot of sweets in here so your handles need to be really strong there we go I'll just cut my threads as I go So the last one now. So when you make the lining, obviously you don't have to do any of this. So it's just putting the uh, four segments together and the base. So it's super, super easy. Although we've got some gathering to do. Which is, uh, which is, again, is very, very easy. And there's lots of different ways of doing it. There's no right or wrong way. I'll show you one way and I'll talk about another when I come to it. I'm having real problems with this Juki at the minute. I think my pressure setting for my presser foot has been uh, altered. It just doesn't like going over anything remotely thick. <laughs> and yet it is an industrial machine. It's doing what it shouldn't be doing. Right, so down there, the side. Let's go. There we go, as quick as I can. But I think you'll find it easier, like I said, if you open up the seams at the back first okay so if we look at the front that's what we've got it's a bit like a bikini rather large but so there's our first handle and that's that's fully functional okay that's that's completely done this one however we've got a loose end <laughs> 
so what we're going to do is we're going to join that last seam now of the four segments so I'm going to take my two sides here bring them together and I'm going to stitch down that seam quarter inch same as you did before okay so turn it through making sure my koalas are all sitting the right way it's a good indication <laughs> so now what we want to do is to put our last strap on so make sure it's sitting straight so it's, it's not twisted in any way and then you're going to attach it to the bottom just like you did before and you're going to stitch it on just like you did before but obviously this time you've got the I'm gonna say I was gonna say difficulty but it actually it's not of stitching this where you've got a whole piece because obviously we can't stitch it sideways so we have to sort of manipulate it but it's, it's okay it's not too bad now I'm not going to put too many pins in this because I've got to sort of ruttle it around a little bit I'm just going to stitch it with not too many pins in as I say just going to try and make sure it sits in the center and open up that seam at the back I know I keep repeating myself but it's important so I'll just get my tape measure again. I'll measure the one inch line. There we go. And we'll just start machining. So you've obviously got this bag to put under your machine, but it's only a short seam, so you should be fine. Okay. All I want you to do is to make sure that A, your seam is open and that your strap is right in the centre of that seam. And do this in bite-sized chunks as well. So it's not too difficult, as you can see. I'm not struggling at all. I think if we'd used like a bosal, you know, like a foam interfacing, I think we would be fighting with this a little bit more. But by all means use it, I'm not stopping you from using it, it's just that I think it, it's, um, you know what Bosal is like, or, you know, in our form, is it in our form? Yeah. It wants to do what it wants to do. So, we're going across and back and across, and that's across our one inch line, and then we're coming down the other side. And so it's not too bad, is it? So try and follow your stitch lines that you did before. If not, like I said, a double line is perfectly fine. In fact, make a statement of it and use a contrasting thread and really make it pop. You know, if this is for Halloween, use some gold thread and, and really make it stand out. So there is the main body of the bag done. We just need to do this base, as you can see. Now, um, you'll notice that the base is a lot, lot smaller <laughs> than the, the bag, the bag bottom. So two things here. If you haven't stabilized the straps, you could probably gather all the way around in one go. So you can and do two lines always always do two lines of gathering so your longest stitch on your machine uh, mine's a six so it's a bit too long so I'm going to go five and a half um, if you've used stabilizer you're adding to the thickness of the um, fabric obviously going around so I would only gather and this is what I'm going to do I'm only going to gather between the straps so I'm going to have four lots of gathering so if I show it to the camera like that so there's one strap obviously there's the other strap so I'm going to gather between those two straps two rows of stitching still then I'm going to gather between those two straps again and again so we'll have four lots of separate gathering now there's lots of people you would say you pull the threads from the top or you most prefer from the bottom something to do with the the um the the, the tension of the of the threads uh, it on short little areas like this it doesn't matter 
Now try and keep your two rows of gathering in within that quarter inch seam allowance. Um, don't use your thread if you've got an automatic thread cutter. <laughs> this is that's it. Don't use that because you want some you want some ends to your threads to be able to pull. So I've done one. So the other way you can do this, now I'm just going to the other strap and I'm swiveling and then I'm coming back on myself. Now, obviously you can do it that way. So I'm getting to the end near the second strap. I'm swiveling around and I'm just coming back on myself. However, for this short piece, it's fine. However, if you're doing a longer piece of gathering, then maybe you do two separate lines and you pick up two, the both ends. As long as you're pulling both top threads or both bottom threads, that's up to you, which you use, but keep it consistent, uh -huh, otherwise it won't work. Um, so you can do that if you want to. Um, gosh so many people have so many different ways oh just cut my threads so many different ways of doing gathering some people like to gather by hand still and that's fine <laughs> there's no rules but I remember when I used to do smocking for my little girls well when they were little girls their dresses I used to love gathering the smocking up before the embroidery part I loved it all all the, the process of smocking, I loved all of it, but um, I think it was the, the hand stitching that I loved most. So we've, we've done the gathering and I've done it on all four segments separately, so four lots of gathering. So now we're going to put right sides together. Now on the, in the pattern it says to you, it says that you should find your it's kind of like your quarter points so fold your circles in half and give them a little pinch both sides and just do a tiny little notch and these scissors I'm using they're what are they Karen Karen K Buckley oh superb so you've done a notch here and a notch here Okay, so now we're folding the other way. So you do north, south, east, west. So you're matching your notches that you just cut at the top. You're pinching these sides and you're just cutting a little notch. Yes, I wonder why didn't I discover these scissors before? I don't know, but they are superb. So while I'm here, I'll do the same with my lining piece. So I'm folding to the center there we go if I show you on the overhead so I'm folding in half folding to, so we've got the center line there and just pinching that so I've got a, a little so it flattens it really tiny little notch an eighth of an inch in if that and then I'm just going to fold my fabric in half again and matching my notches there and then giving it a little squidge flattens the fabric so I can cut my notch easily there we go. So now I've got uh, notches north, south, east, west. <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> so you're going to match these up to the center of your straps. So if you remember um, what I said to you about the straps go right in the center of your seam line, well your notches want to go in the center now of your strap. Now you can gather your threads up first and then attach and pit or pin in, in the strategic places or use clips. Get those seams opened. I know I haven't because I'm doing this for the for the video, but you I've I've said it enough. Or you know, I'm gonna just um put my base in temporarily if you like, and then I'm going to use my bobbin threads to pull. And just to make sure that each four segments fit the circle, the circle base. And it's quite nice because because it's gathered, it, you know it's going to fit. Yeah. 
that's the nice thing about some, doing some gathering. So it kind of looks like that. So I would just now go through each segment. Let's just try one that's got both threads. <laughs> and tomorrow I didn't cut them off. Let me just get my eyes in focus here. And I would start pulling those threads up. Let's just get these. Bear with. There's one. That's the one that I cut, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's tiny. That's why it's good not to use your thread, thread cutter on your machine for this. So it just needs a little bit of gathering. Not much, doesn't need a huge amount. So do a little bit and then fit it to your circle. It's gonna be on the base of the bag. So if you get it slightly not quite gathered equally, I shouldn't worry about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and gather all of those up. So just bear with while I do that. And like I said before, um, you don't need to do this. Well, no, you do do. You do need to do this on the lining, but you can just do one lot of gathering, which is probably um, a lot quicker. There we go. So that's the second one. I mean, the only thing about gathering is you get tons of long threads everywhere. And if you want to at the end, when we've stitched this together, you can pull the gathering stitches out. If you've just gone slightly over the quarter inch and you can see them and it's annoying you, just pull them out. And then as you stitch, if you stitch um, so you're coming down to the gathering, if you like, where you've pulled your threads, then you can adjust because you've still got those threads to pull if you need to. So where we've done the stitch, pivot and come back down, start at where the pivot point is. Then you've still got the threads to adjust. So a little bit of jiggery pokery, we're just about there. So take your stitch length down. I would go, well, I'd go to probably three. Let's take the clips out as we go. And I'll just open that seam up while I'm there. Now, if you can't manage a quarter of an inch here, um, it really, um, you know, it's not crucial to the design that you uh, maybe do three eighths of an inch. You've got a lot going on. You've got a lot of layers. You've got the wadding. So be kind to yourself. So just make your way slowly round your circle. Keep adjusting. Open up those seams as you go. If you haven't already ironed those open, because um, it, like I said before, it distributes the quantity of fabric. Just make your way around so you can see I'm just doing little bits at a time. It's much, much easier when you do the lining because you haven't got so many layers. Um, but you've got to remember what this is for. I mean, if you're going to gift it, obviously, you're going to want to make an absolutely fabulous job of it. Totally. But this could be a dummy run. Maybe you're making this for your grandchildren, as I said before, and they're not going to inspect your stitching and say, oh, Grandma, you went a little bit wriggly here, or well, I'd like to think they wouldn't. <laughs> oh, dear. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> I'd say, all right, well, come round mine next time and you can make your own. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, I was making Halloween bags for my four grandchildren. I think I had four then. I can't remember. Anyway, 
I got so frustrated with them. I just took them, not the children, <laughs> making of the bags. I think it, I was just making a mountain out of a molehill with them, you know. I was just, um, obviously I was incredibly busy and I was thinking, oh, why won't these go together quickly? I haven't got time. I took them over to my mum <laughs> and I uh, said, mum, please just stitch these up before I go crazy. So she did. <laughs> I don't know if the children have still got them actually. That'd be lovely if they did. A little legacy from their, their great grandma. Okay, so we're back to the start. And obviously you've got all of these long threads there <clears throat> and, and cut them off, make trim them up. You're not gonna see them because they're on the inside of your bag, but it's nice to keep everything neat. So trim them, make them pretty. And like I said, if you look at the base, so have a little eyeball look around here. If you can see any of the gathering, which, no, I can't. No, there's a little tiny bit, so I'm not worried about that. You can just pull all those gathering threads out. So there's one or two. In fact, it's probably more loose threads that I've caught in the seam than anything else. So we'll just pull that, pull that out. There we go. So do, do spend a bit of time removing those gathering stitches if, if, it, if they annoy you. So that's what you should have. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? And uh, that's what it looks like. So let's quickly get the lining put together. So this is really a much, much easier process. So we're literally going to do right sides together with our first two pieces. Please make sure that you've got them or well, certainly directional will help you in this case. So you're stitching all the tops, all the tops together, all the bottoms. So that's two joined together. So now we'll do the three, the third one. So fortunately, my, as I said, mine's directional. So uh, in this instance, it's actually quite useful. <laughs> Um, don't forget to leave your turning gap. It doesn't matter which seam. Maybe do it on the first so you remember. I'll do it on the last. And um, this is this is such lovely fabric. It brings me such joy to look at it. It's so I don't know, so quirky, and the colours match the colours in the koala fabric and even the little I don't know if you can see there's little tiny dots of colour in here um, it just sort of hidden amongst the what are they, eucalyptus I don't know if it is eucalyptus but um, and it matches the koalas so we've done our four see how quick that was we're going to do the fourth I'm leaving my turning gap in the fourth um, depending on what wadding you've used bosal etc etc give yourself a good gap so at least minimum three inches. Um, you know, think about what fabric you're using. Stitching a turning gap closed doesn't take long at all. So there's our four pieces put together. So if I turn it the right way around, let's just check. We're all, we've got our grasses all going the same way. Yep. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so on the bottom edge, don't forget it's the bottom edge, we're now going to gather all the way round. So your longest stitch, and I'm going to do the two rows on the, and I'm swiveling at the end with my needle and coming back on myself. So one continuous row of gathering. Because this is slightly larger, you might want to do two separate rows and then pull from both ends. And I know a lot of people do it that way. I've only ever done it this way. It's funny, isn't it, how you get used to a certain, certain way of doing things. So I'm just swiveling, coming back on myself. And again, try and keep within that quarter inch. But because we're using a long stitch, the gathering stitch just it's just literally the longest stitch on your machine they're so easy to just pull out and often they say if you're making a toile so if you're making um, a mock-up 
just to see if it, wor it works for you and see if you can manage to stitch it. They say use a large stitch so you can easily unpick it and either make it up again to your satisfaction or you can use the fabric for something else, you know. But it's easy, easy, easy. That's what we're after. We don't do difficult. My threads, I didn't mean to. Every time. So <laughs> I've gone all the way around the bottom of my bag piece. So um, you can use top threads or bottom threads, whichever is easier for you. And you're just going to pull that thread round. So just keep pulling these threads. Now I would over gather to start off with. <laughs> um, and then you can equal it out. So don't forget, you've got the seams on the actual bag itself, on the bag body itself, plus you've got the notches. So you, again, what you're doing is gathering between notches, yeah? So it's all equal. It doesn't need to be gathered a huge amount, but if you start off with a few gathers in there, if you see what I mean, then you can't go wrong. I think we're fine. So I'm just going to turn this is that what I want to do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this so it's inside out and then I'm doing right sides together. So I'm going to match the notch, one of the notches, to one of the seams and just start stitching from there. And if you want to, you know, pin all these on, you know, perhaps give yourself a bit of a head start. So pin all the four, you know, north, south, east, west. And, and either stitch from the straight edge of your circle or stitch on the gathered part. I think if you stitch on the gathered part you can see what you're doing better and you can also see if, if the gathers are puckering because sometimes they, they will fold over on each other and misbehave. So what, whichever is comfortable for you. So there's my four pins in the strategic points. So I'll just uh, Reduce my stitch length down. Now, if you do a slightly larger seam here, so let's just say three eighths of an inch, that's actually a good thing for lining. Um, you'll find that um, the, the lining sits better inside if the lining is smaller. Okay, so let's just work our way around and ease those gathers and you can do that before so don't forget this is the lining so it's not so crucial um but yes yeah, so if you do make it smaller by in increasing the seam allowance to let's say three eighths because that's easier for you perhaps then that's a good thing so by all means go ahead and do that or the other thing you can do before you do the gathering, it's just to take a quarter of an inch off the bottom of your pattern pieces and and, and use, just take it from there. So I'm just working my way around the base, just making sure my gathers are sitting nicely. And like I say, you can gather these all up so they fit before you stitch and put more pins in. You know, I've only used four, but use eight, use 12. Okay, coming back to the end. So you can see doing the lining is ever such a lot quicker than the outer because we've done one continuous lot of gathering. I'm just making sure my gathers are sitting nicely okay there we are so there's our base attached we've got our turning gap so once again we've got our lovely gathered bottom I'm just inspecting it there's a gathering stitch I can just pull out it's fine good Okay, so um, we're going to do right sides together. 
So make sure you tuck your handles in and um, start off where you're matching a seam. So take a seam here, take a seam there and pop those two together. I'm going to use a clip. Now with the lining, I haven't opened up the seam because we're only using a, a nice lightweight cotton. And once you've put that first seam together, the other four seams will sit nicely in the right place. Let's pop those handles in. That's it, a lot of fabric going on here. Now I can just bring my seams together. So again, we're just doing those four seams. I'm not worrying about um, anything in between. And um, don't forget, because we left that one inch gap at the top of your straps, you, you've got plenty of uh, space to stitch these around. Any smaller, you, you know, you might have caught your strap. But there we go. So there's our two pieces put together. So our lining's on the outside. Matters not whether your lining is on the outside or the inside, but it's right sides together. You've got a turning gap somewhere. Well, some one of these is a turning gap. There you go in the lining. So dead easy to pull through. So we're just going to stitch all the way around. Oh, hi there. Thank you for stopping by. I was going to talk to you about the Goal Club, actually, and I'm preparing for our Facebook Live tonight because every week on Facebook in the Gold Sewing Group, we actually do other things like mm, free motion embroidery tonight. So the Gold Online Sewing Group, what is all that about? Well, if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see the sign up tab. Click on that. You get a choice of membership. But what you do get every month is two different super patterns especially for you and, and do you know what when they go in the shop the next month they're 4 99 each so this is an absolute bargain for five pounds about six dollars twenty something like that you're getting those two full patterns with video tutorials as well so why don't you join up today and join the online sewing group which is known as the gold sewing group i'll see you there bye there we go so our stitch length is on still i've got it on mine on three still but you could take it down to to two and a half it's fine because these are slightly curved the top or top and bottom um it's slightly stretching which is great because it means it's always going to fit so you can see it's a nice easy make there's a little bit to it technical wise we're putting the straps on but I think you'll all cope with that beautifully. And I think I'll probably see a lot of these because there's lots of um, different ways of using them. Like I say, you could, um, you could fill these with, um, make them out of Christmas fabric and just fill them with baubles, you know. So we're coming back to where we started. So you can see it doesn't take long. Back stitch. There we go. So we've stitched all the way around. Oops. There we go. Stitched all the way around. So now all I'm going to do is turn it through. Now on the one that I made, the Halloween one, I haven't top stitched this top edge at all. Now that's um, pure choice because the reason for that is because of the stitching was in black, it would have to be so, so neat. Um, and I thought, you know what, it doesn't need it. <laughs> if your fabric is forgiving, you know, if the pattern is quite jazzy, uh, then stitch that top seam. Um, it, it makes, it does make a difference actually. So let's just try and pull this through. I probably left too small a turning gap. It's quite big. There's a lot of wadding, there's a lot of straps going on. So we'll just keep tugging until we've got it all out. There we go. So while that's out, let's top stitch it. I know you'll you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked that I'm top stitching. And this I'm all I'm doing is top stitching the turning gap closed. Um, don't forget you can always hand stitch these turning gaps, but you know what? I suppose it depends who this is for. 
and how much work you want to do and how much how neat you want it to be um, because a top stitch like this is perfectly acceptable on the machine but you know so it looks utterly beautiful maybe you're going to make it reversible that would be nice then by all means stitch by hand and make it super neat so there we are so we're just going to pop that in inside um, if you made your lining slightly smaller it won't be so puffy inside it'll it'll hang just a wee bit short which is fine but obviously you're going to press this top edge or at least give it a finger press so it sits nicely and like I say, you finish it off with a top stitch if you like. I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. I like to think I give you a few options of how you can finish these things off. Maybe this is going to be a storage bag on your craft desk, in which case I might even add pockets to the side panels. Oh, it looks so cool in the koala fabric. Look at that. Obviously it needs a press. But I think you get the general idea. And of course then you can pop the straps down. Let's do it so you can see. Pop the straps down. It's actually it's actually really quite big inside. It's it's I had a cauldron in mind when I made it, when I designed it, when I had the shape. Uh, I wanted a cauldron look, <laughs> even though you might not use it for Halloween, etc. But you could if you wanted. Put a plant in there, <laughs> covered it up completely now, and just have it as as a sort of a plant pot um, cover, maybe. But obviously, be careful with um, with water and how you're going to water your plants. There we go. It's sort of slipped down a bit now, isn't it? There we go. That's it. That's better. So, I think that sits really nicely with the planting. I, do, I suppose it depends what plant you have. Maybe you see making Christmas fabric you can have a poinsettia. I think that would be nice. Let me just try and oof those ivy leaves up because it's tipping it over. <laughs> there we go. I think you get the effect, don't you? Um, and also, if um, you know, uh, Christmas time is a time when we give um, like hyacinth bulbs and things like that. So that would be cute to to pot make a pot up, put it within another pot that doesn't have any holes so it's not going to leak and gift it at Christmas with hyacinth bulbs ready to go. I think that would look amazing. Um, I did have another plant. This is a, a banana plant from uh, John's um, granddaughter. <laughs> it's a bit too tall. I said, you know, when, it, when we first had it, we had banana leaves right at the base and now we don't. So <laughs> matches my top. If I do that, you can see <laughs> what it looks like. But it's a bit too tall, so obviously choose your plant wisely. But I think that's rather cute. So we've got the Halloween version here, which has been pressed. <laughs> and then we've got the koala bear version there, which I think is quite cute. I'm going to give it a press anyway and have it on my back shelf with my, my other two makes of the, of the month. Uh, which is Orchid, the uh, storage bag, the caddy. And there we are, so that's Aussie. I hope you enjoy making Aussie and uh, I hope you make loads. <laughs>